welcome to the second session of current electricity. Now, in this session, in this class, I would like to explain you in details how the resistance varies and we will define the temperature coefficient of resistance. Suppose, if I write R naught, this represents the resistance of the conductor at 0 degree Celsius. Its temperature is increased now, then resistance changes to RT. RT means the resistance of the conductor at temperature T. The increase in temperature or change in temperature, I will be writing as delta T. Then how these three are related? These three are related by the equation which I am writing on the board RT equal to R naught 1 plus alpha delta T. This is a linear relation and in this I have one constant of proportionality here one constant I am write, I have written here and this is alpha. Let us write the equation for alpha. So, alpha is written as R T minus R naught upon R naught multiplied by delta T. Now, this alpha is called as the, the coefficient of the temperature coefficient of resistance of that particular material. Let us define this alpha equal to see the numerator here final resistance minus initial resistance. It means it is the change in change in resistance upon R naught is the original resistance. Therefore, I write like this original resistance multiplied by delta T. It is rise in the temperature, rise in temperature. So, let us try to define this. The temperature coefficient of resistance of a material is defined as the change in resistance per unit original resistance per degree rise in temperature. The SI unit of alpha is, you look at this right hand side, SI unit of resistance change in resistance is ohm divided by the unit of original you know, SI unit of original resistance is ohm, SI unit of temperature is degree Celsius, uh, SI unit of temperature is actually the K you can write, Kelvin you can write in terms of degree Celsius also you can write. So, ohm ohm gets cancelled therefore, I get per degree rise in temperature. Therefore, the unit of alpha is per degree rise in temperature, per degree rise, okay, per degree Celsius, per Kelvin also we can write. What is the significance of this alpha? In what way it helps us? Here, in case of conductors, in case of conductors, the value of alpha, value of alpha is large positive value of alpha is large positive. What do you mean by this? You look at this equation again, the right hand side should be large, it should also be positive. That means, the numerator should be more and also it should be positive. It happens only if the final resistance is more as compared to the initial resistance. So, therefore, I can say that if the alpha value is very large and positive, then such type of materials are represented by or they are the conductors. So, conductors have large value of alpha that is positive. It means, if you increase the temperature with rise in temperature, the increase in the resistance, the change in the resistance is also very large. Second case, in case of the semiconductors, in case of semiconductors, the value of alpha is negative. It means that if you go on increasing the temperature of the semiconducting materials, then the resistance goes on decreasing. The third type, we have a special type of alloys. The names of those alloys are, first one I can write here manganin, then I have eureka, then I have the nichrome and lastly fourth one known as a constantin. These four special alloys, they have 
small positive value of alpha small positive value of alpha it means with rise in temperature in case of these four alloys resistance increases but that increase is very very small it means practically almost the change in the resistance of these alloys are almost negligible it means at any temperature the value of alpha, the value of alpha that means the value of uh, this alpha is uh, it remains of course a uh, small positive but the value of resistance of these four materials it always remains same because of this reason these four alloys they are used to make the standard resistance coils standard resistances and resistance coils in the laboratory you must have seen that or uh, resistance coils we have and it is made of the resistance coil and that resistance coil they are made of these the meter bridge wire the potentiometer uh, wires they are all made of uh, these materials so this is the significance of this here two, one two mark question comes very frequently in the board exam why are the manganese eureka nichrome and constant trend they are used to make standard resistance coils what makes them special then uh, two points you have to write the first one is the first one is they have a very small value of alpha positive value of alpha it means with rise in temperature increase in the resistance change in the resistance is very less second one is these material the, these uh, alloys have high value of resistivity so because of their high resistivity and small positive value of temperature coefficient of resistance they are used to make the standard resistance coils and don't forget about uh, this particular fact okay then comes how the resistivity changes with temperature if i try to write that here x axis y axis i'll be taking on y axis i'll take resistivity on x axis i'll take the temperature and there are certain uh, materials certain uh, other types of materials where at high temperature they have some resistivity okay no? and if the temperature is going on increased then resistivity also increases now what we do let us decrease the temperature with decrease in temperature resistivity also decreases but at one particular temperature at one particular temperature suddenly the resistivity and resistance both becomes zero that means those materials they don't offer any opposition to the flow of charges and this temperature is uh, tc transition temperature you can also call it as the tc means the critical uh, temperature so at critical temperature beyond that critical temperature even if the materials are cooled then they lose their entire resistivity and resistance then the flow of charge becomes very complete means the charges will flow all the charges will flow without any opposition so such type of conductors are called as the super conductors and this phenomenon where the resistivity completely becomes zero is called as a superconductivity but superconductivity is possible only if the materials are cooled below their transition or that a critical temperature at room temperature it is not possible so this is about the resistance resistivity and how it changes with temperature now let us try to connect the resistors in series and parallel and see what happens to the final or effective resistance now i will take the first resistor of resistance r1 and the second one with resistance r2 and the third one with resistance r3 here i have connected all the three resistors end to end so this type of end to end connection is called as the series connection i'll take one battery here and at this battery i'll connect across this series combination of these three resistors a and b between across these two points a and b as a result of that what happens here current starts flows flowing and the same current is flowing through the all the three resistors because current has only single path only one path now when current i flows through r1 then across this resistor a potential difference will be developed which is v1 so i will write v1 equal to by using the ohm's law i uh, into r1 
when same current flows to the second resistor R2, then potential drop across it is V2 equal to I R2. Similarly, the potential drop across the third resistor R3 is V3. So, V3 equal to I R3. When the resistors are connected in series, the potential difference V across these two points A and B across the combination, the total potential difference V equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. Here V is the effective potential difference. Now, if V is the effective potential difference, then the right hand side is I into Rs, where Rs is the effective resistance in series combination. Now, I will substitute all these three values in this equation, then I will be getting here I Rs equal to I R1 plus I R2 plus I R3. So, I is common here, I can be cancelled. So, ultimately I get Rs equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. So, this equation gives me the effective resistance of the various resistors when they are connected in series combination. In series combination, remember the potential drop across each and every resistor is gets divided actually, it is less. If any one of the resistor is not working, then the entire combination will not work. Actually, these are the disadvantages. But if you want to have more resistance from very simple small resistor, you can get the high resistance by combining them in series. So, series combination gives you more resistance. That means, the effective resistance in the series combination is greater than the greatest individual resistance. For example, if R1 equal to 1, R2 equal to 2, R3 equal to 3, then what is Rs? Rs equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3, that is 6. So, this Rs which is 6 is greater than the greatest individual resistance, that means 6 is greater than 3. So, in series combination, you get more resistance. Similarly, what happens when the three resistors are connected in a parallel? Uh, let us see. Here I will take the first resistor, below it the second resistor and below it the third resistor. Now uh, you can take more resistors also. So, in these derivations I am taking only this uh, resistor, three resistors. Okay. This is R1, R2 and R3. This combination is again connected across the battery the potential difference supplied by the battery is V. Now, current starts I. When I reaches this point A, then at that point, at that junction, current has various part, different paths. Current I1 flows through R1, I2 flows through R2 and I3 flows through R3. That means, current gets divided. The current gets divided in such a way that the potential drop across the first resistance R1, it is I1 R1. Similarly, the potential difference across the second resistor is I2 R2. Similarly, across the third resistor, the potential difference is I3 R3. When all the three currents are reaching at point B, again it gives rise to the same current I. Here, the potential drop across these resistors, it is same. That means, potential drop across all the three resistors is V each. So, therefore, V equal to I1 R1 equal to I2 R2 equal to I3 R3. But what is happening here? The total current is now getting divided. Therefore, I can write I equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3, where I is the, the current, the total current. Here, I would like to substitute the values I1, use this equation. So, I1 equal to V by R1 plus I2, if I use this equation, it is V by R2 plus V by R3. Now, what about the left hand side? The left hand side is V upon the effective resistance and this effective resistance I am representing it by Rp. Therefore, your V is cancelled. After that, I get 1 by Rp equal to 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 plus 1 upon R3. That means, the reciprocal of the effective resistance in parallel combination is equal to 
the sum of reciprocals of the individual resistors. Whereas, in the series combination, the effective resistance is sum of the individual resistance, but here the sum of the reciprocals is equal to the reciprocal of the resultant effective resistance. The advantage of this parallel combination is if any one of the appliance or resistance if it is not working remaining two will work. Therefore, I can connect a switch along with each resistor because of this reason and potential drop is same across all these resistors. So, this combination is used in the domestic connections. So, in the household circuits remember students we have the parallel combination. Based upon this there are many numericals you can practice those numericals. Now, let us study about the cells and the circuit equation the internal resistance of the cell. What happens when the cells are connected in series and when the cells are connected in parallel combinations. So, I begin with a simple cell a simple cell consists of one beaker one container glass container you can say and in this we will take one electrolyte and inside this electrolyte we will immerse the two electrodes one is positive one other is negative and when the circuit is completed when the external circuit is connected uh, completed with the help of one external resistance then the current starts flowing through that. So, this is called as a cell the details of the cell not in syllabus, but as an additional information the cells are of two types primary and secondary primary cells are those which can be used only once they cannot be recharged secondary cell can be recharged again and again. There are fuel cells also they are there are solid cells likewise there are many more type of cells. So, when this cell is connected across the conductor this cell provides a potential difference across this conductor as a result of that current starts flowing through it. The circuit symbol of the cell is like this one line bigger line one smaller line both are parallel they are uh, written very close to each other. The bigger line is positive terminal the smaller one is a negative terminal it is an electrochemical cell. Each and every electrochemical cell has a property that is called as a EMF. EMF means electromotive force. The definition of EMF is the work done in driving the charges from one terminal of the battery to the another terminal of the battery. 